Good morning and welcome. We'd like to begin with a word of thanks that John Hutchison is filling in this morning. Troy is not with us, so all the music over there this morning is provided by John. So we thank John for filling in for Troy. This is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you are in the house of God. Join me in the call to worship. We gather as the body of Christ. We are many individuals, but together we are one in Christ. Each one of us has our own gifts, our own calling, and our own role. But all of us proclaim Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Our opening hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Please stand if you are able. We do ask that the praises of Almighty God will be present in this service of worship at the very power and the presence of the Holy Spirit will be at work within each and every life so that each and every life through their mouth through their voice will acknowledge the greatness and the glory of God Almighty. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please continue in prayer with me. Almighty God, when faced with earthly powers that seem overwhelming, we crumble. We fear this world. We fear losing our status, our capability, our station, more than we fear you. Forgive our sins and teach us to trust in you when we take a stand for what we know is right according to the word of God. Amen. Once you were in darkness, but now you're in the light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good, right, and true. 
in Jesus Christ we are forgiven this is the good news of the gospel may be seated. Can you come forward, Gabriel? We do a message. <laughs> Have the children come forward. And of course, I need some help for translation. And I have a question for you. In Haiti, they play soccer. Soccer? Yeah. yeah. Okay, soccer. So they understand soccer. Okay. They call that football. That they play with football? Football? Yeah, football? Yes. Okay. Well, our football is a little different. Okay. So you go to the soccer field. Yes. And they are taking the ball and kicking it. And your team that you love scores a goal. So what happens to you when you are watching? When the ball goes in, you get excited and you go, Yay! Is that not true? You get excited? Yay! Yes! Okay. Now, you are praising. Praising the player for making the goal. Qui marque goal là? Now when we come to church, y a we are to go to God. <coughs> Yay! <laughs> we are to by God, love la même gens où tu es content l'équipe pour faire goal là. We are to praise him. You na présence God là. Bon Dieu, on a présence mon Dieu Kounia. Because he is so wonderful. He Parce is wonderful. Très bon. So think about so, when you go to a soccer game when we football and your player joueur, kicks the ball point point là, into the goal, il fait goal là, and everybody in the stadium goes yay tout le monde qui est dans stade là content we are in the stadium. <laughs> so what should the stadium people be doing? We're in the presence of God. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Glory to God. All right now, you're letting go of being yeah. Presbyterian. We are content to be in the presence of God. Even the people who have made goals, we are content. But we are in the presence of God. We are content to be glorified in God. That's the idea of praise. Ça, idée pour la paix. Our praise goes to God. Ah, ma prière, bon Dieu, Not to the soccer player. No, pas pour jouer, pas jouer football. So let's say a prayer. Na prier, bon we praise you, O God. No, prier, oh, bon Dieu. You are great. You great. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I should have brought in a soccer ball. <laughs> Before we pass the piece this morning, I'd like to say that 
there may be some that are a little bit hesitant to actually do a lot of shaking of hands and things like that. And if you, if you see that, please don't be offended or anything, but just find a way to pass the peace in a different manner rather than confrontation with the hand, okay? Some, sometimes it's a little worrisome to people to, to engage in physical touch, but please don't be offended, but still pass the peace of Christ in any way you can that's appropriate or helpful to anyone, all right? Does everybody know what I'm trying to say? All right. Let us share the peace of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Peace of Lord Jesus. Peace of Lord Jesus. Peace, Tim. Peace of Lord Jesus. Do you have the scriptures for them and stuff? Just the scriptures. I didn't do the rest of it. Oh. Yeah, they already have it. Peace. Peace, Deborah. Peace. Peace of Lord Jesus be with you. Peace of Lord Jesus be with you. Peace of Lord Jesus. Peace of Lord Jesus be with you. You ever want to play catch? Give me a call. All right. You ever want to go down the ball field and throw the ball around and stuff? Peace of Lord Jesus. Peace of Lord Jesus be with Time. All the time. Uh, All the time. Yeah. Pretty neat, huh? Very, very true. <clears throat> this is the day the Lord has made. Let us what? Rejoice and be glad in it. Boy, you got to start your day rejoicing. And then the rest of the day just flows. Start your day bitter, and the rest of the hill just goes downhill. Every day you make that choice to do what? To serve God. That little, little choice changes everything. It's the reason you open a door for somebody. It's the reason that you what? Start to smile. As well we should because God gives us so many blessings. So many blessings. Announcements today. Well, we got a few. Bob Starr, raise your hand. He's hosting it today. Thank you. Over there, the hospitality hour. Let's hear it for Bob. Yeah, yay. 
<laughs> Bible study on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Also, we're going to resume that prayer time at noon. And uh, that's on Wednesday also. So get that going again. Um, worship service, we'll be moving from here. Bill and I will be transforming this, this building over into the regular on September the 17th. So you got, yes, as Ruth said, we've got another week here or so. But, but on September the 17th, we won't meet here anymore. We'll meet back in the sanctuary. And that'll be a praise too. Um, any visitors? I don't think we have any. But if we do, we will <laughs> welcome. It's good to have you here. And uh, any prayer requests, make sure you sign up. Nita says she can't hear me. I am yelling, darling. If I, if I raised my voice to her like this, you know what she would do? Good grief would she be upset with me. Never, never. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, anyways, enough of that. But back up here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on the announcements. Uh, let's take the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you know, we come here today, as we do every week, and we've come here to praise you, to give you glory for the wonderful things you've done for us. It is fitting and right that we do so. Help us to realize how truly blessed we are and to take those blessings and share them with a world so desperately in need. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Scripture lesson today um, is taken from Acts chapter 16, verse 22 through 34, and it's found in the bulletin here, and you can follow along with me. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set foot before them, set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord.
Thank you, Karen. Thank you, John. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalm number 48. Psalm number 48. Hear the word of God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within his citadels, God has shown himself a sure defense. And the kings assembled, they came together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic. They took to flight, trembling took hold of them. Pains as a woman in labor, as when an east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God, which God establishes forever. Selah. We ponder your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your name, O God, is like praises reaches to the end of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion. Go around and count its towers. Consider well its ramparts and go through its citadels that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God, forever and ever. He will be our guide forever. The word of the Lord. Ichiban. Ichiban. It's a Japanese word. And I learned it from my son when he was in the Marine Corps, stationed in Japan. And they would use it at sporting events. But you might be familiar with it about a steakhouse, Japanese steakhouse, Ichiban comes from two words in Japanese. Ichi means one, and ban means in a series of numbers. So it literally means the first in the series of numbers. So number one. In the book of Acts, there was a city put into confusion because Paul the apostle was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and idolatry was falling. And those who made the little idols were upset that their little idols that they were selling of the goddess Diana, Artemis, Diana, Roman, Artemis, Greek, it doesn't matter. And they were yelling in the city, Great is Diana of Ephesus. Great is Diana. Great is Artemis. Exalting and praising a false god. In this message, I'm going to talk about exalting and praising the true God. First, God is great and greatly to be praised. Second, God inhabits the praises of his people. And third, God works through the praises of his people. God is great and greatly to be praised. How great is God? God can speak a word and the universe comes into existence. All that you see with your eyes, the earth itself, the sun, the moon, the stars, God spoke and they came into existence. How great is his name in all the earth that he has the power to take a nation out of bondage in Egypt and into a promised land. 
How great is God? You must decide. You must decide. As for the psalmist, the psalmist has already decided. God is great, therefore he is to be praised greatly. In other words, what amount of praise do you give on a scale of one to ten? Is it a one, a two, a three? Or is it a ten? We measure things by scales. People were wondering how strong was that earthquake? And so a scale was developed called the Richter scale. And they'll give you the percentage on the Richter scale. How strong that earthquake was. What type of a storm is it? It's a category two, it's a category three. What is the measurement of your praise? And the psalmist says, it needs to be great praise. In other words, not just a little bit. From the depths of your soul, in the innermost being of your life, you acknowledge that God is supreme in all the world. God is supreme in your life. God is supreme in the church. He is a great God and greatly to be praised is what the psalmist tells us. Now secondly, God inhabits the praises of his people. We are told that in Psalm 22. God inhabits the praises of his people. In other words, when God's people begin to praise him, God draws a little closer. God comes a little more nearer to us. When we draw near to him by praising him, he draws near to us because he loves to be praised. You have seen this in your life. An individual who can always say something nice and something good to anyone. Immediately, a person is drawn in because that individual has praises on his or her mouth for others. And so it's the same with God. When you put praises on your mouth, God says, I want to come a little closer to you because I like what I hear. I like what I hear from you. You're praising me, so I want to be closer to you. So we are told that God inhabits the praises of his people. If you want to draw close to God, start praising him. If you want God to get a little closer to you, just start telling him how wonderful he is, how great he is, how powerful he is. And he will come closer to you. And then thirdly, God works through the praises of his people. Now we saw this in Acts chapter 16 in the Holy Scripture that was read to you. That... When Paul and Silas are in jail, they begin a praise service. Now think about this. They've been thrown in jail. They're in stocks and bonds being held tightly. And instead of saying, let's talk about how miserable this situation is, they say, let's have ourselves a praise service. Let's praise God. Can you praise God in any and all situations? They did. 
And do you know what happened? There was a mighty shaking of the earth. And they were set free. They were set free. Why? Because they decided to praise God in the midst of their situation. They decided to find one good reason to say what we should be thinking about God is he's still a good God. Even though we are in this jail, even though we are in bondage, even though we're in stocks and bonds, our God is still a good God and I still want to praise him. I want to praise him now. I want to praise him in the morning. I want to praise him at the noon. I want to praise him in the evening. I want to praise him when everything's going well. I want to praise Him when things are not going well. I want to praise Him when my body is healthy, and I'm going to praise Him even if my body isn't healthy. I'm going to praise Him when everybody around me loves me. I'm going to praise Him when everybody around me despises me and hates me. Do you see the power of praise? It was that praise that went up and God drew close and he shook the earth and all of a sudden the jail cells busted open and now the situation changed completely the jailer is beside himself and wants to kill himself but God through his intervention will bring about salvation in the life of the jailer now there was a man many years ago who was an alcoholic and he wrote a book called From Prison to Praise whereby in his situation his alcoholism led to all kinds of destruction in his life and then he came to know God and he decided to start praising God in any and all situations and it radically changed the situation. It radically changed his life. It radically changed everyone around him to just begin to praise God even though his life had caused a lot of heartache and a lot of pain in people's lives. From Prison to Praise is the title of the book Merlin Carruthers. And I want to say this, that if you find yourself in a situation and you begin to get downcast about it, think about Paul and Silas. They decided to praise God. They decided to lift up God's name in praise, in honor, in adoration, despite their circumstances despite whatever you might be going through health-wise, despite whatever you might be going through in terms of family struggles, family issues, despite in whatever you might be going through financially, there is still room in the heart and the spirit of an individual to praise Almighty God. Why? Because He is Almighty God. Period. And when you do, you will begin to discover, like others, the great power of praise. And the psalmist starts off immediately in Psalm 48, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And that theme is throughout the Psalms, and we see it in many lives of many believers, that they will praise God in any and all situations of life. So we looked at God is great, greatly to be praised. God inhabits the praises of his people. And God works through the praises of his people. The story is told about the great conductor of symphonies, Toscanini, who gave a performance that just astounded the audience. 
And they clapped and clapped and he came out for encore over and over as a conductor of the symphony. And finally, as the clapping died down, he looked over at his musicians and he said, they are nothing. He said, I am nothing. But Beethoven, he is everything. God is everything. Everything. And you know what he wants from you? It's very simple. He wants you to praise him. Let's pray together. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. And we ask that you'll give inside of all of us that wonderful spirit of the Holy Spirit so that we can praise God greatly in all situations of life, even situations of life that bring discouragement to us. Help us to find the ability to praise you even in situations of life where we would say they don't appear to be good at all. Please help us to find ways to still praise you. And ask that the spirit of praise will be in the hearts and lives of God's people, here and now, and always. Through Jesus Christ the Lord, I pray. Amen. We're going to sing a Fanny Crosby hymn. And um, it's a wonderful hymn. And basically tells you just praise him, praise him all the time. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing all earth his wonderful song proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope, eternal salvation. Praise him, praise him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, heavenly portals, loud with the sound of strain. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. We continue our praise of God through the giving of our tithes, offerings, and gifts.
to the yearning for clinging of the heart. A moment to surrender the things we should Let the praises of your people be shown in the giving of these, the tithes, offerings, and gifts. Be pleased to receive them as you are pleased to receive us, and use them that the world might know you are a great God, and you are to be praised greatly. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we surrender these gifts as we surrender our lives to that very purpose. Amen. You may be seated. We come into a time of prayer, and at the time of prayer, we'd like to mention that Jane Centers was in an accident this past week and severely injured, and she is in St. Rita's Hospital. And right at the moment, she's very overwhelmed with a lot of pain and discomfort. So she kind of wants to keep any visitation to a minimum. But Jane is very much in need of your prayers, your love, and support. You could send a card to St. Rita's Hospital, Jane Center, St. Rita's Hospital here in Lima. And... Um, when I visit with her, I stay about five minutes or so because she's in so much pain and discomfort from the accident that she was in. Do we have any others? Do you know what room she's in? What room? I don't have that in front of me. She was in ICU, but she's out of ICU now. She's, I think, on the seventh floor, section K, I think. But anyhow, just. Yes, Jim. Yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I got my first sergeant's voice here. That's okay. <laughs> they need it. <laughs> but uh, I have several friends back in Indiana that have went through a living hell. They, uh, I just don't know what to say, but... Uh, I need prayers for all of my friends back in Indiana that are going through several stages of cancer. And uh, I don't know, I left them in such good health and happiness and now they're all, I just, they need to, your prayers. Thank you, Jim. I say good morning, everyone. Have joy for this community teach because Pastor tried to translate something in Creole for my neighbor, my friend, my Asian people that make me happy because I see inside my family that make me happy. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for the church, for everything.
Do we have any others? Although we have a short prayer here in the service, please continue your prayers after we leave the service when you go home in this week. Continue in prayer for these individuals that were mentioned. Our Heavenly Father, we acknowledge of your great power, of your power indeed to change our lives, your power to bring healing to the human body, your power to bring us in contact with others who are filled with your love. We ask our Heavenly Father for those that we have mentioned who are struggling in terms of their spiritual life, in terms of their physical health, we pray for healing to come to them in body, soul, and spirit, that they will be made well and be made whole by the name of Jesus. And so that when these results occur in the lives of individuals that we know and love and even in our own life, the life will give honor, praise, and glory to Thee, and that God's name will be magnified and glorified in all things. The needs of God's people, the needs of our family, the needs of our community, the needs of the hurting and the suffering, the needs of those who are sick and ill, we hold them before You, and ask that you provide for them and bring about in their life that wonderful touch of healing that comes through Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of us all. For we pray in his name as he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we close our service with another hymn by Fanny Crosby, Pass Me Not.
and go forth from this sanctuary praising God. And let the praise of God be with you in the morning, in the noon, and at the night, and on this day and every day. Amen. Thank you.